in the dance one time. Yes. Stay with me if you ain't got plans one time. Yes. One time. I get it. Yeah, I know. Good Sunday afternoon. Good Sunday afternoon, everybody. Good Sunday afternoon. Good hot Sunday afternoon. This is Deborah Mitchell, your host. Once again, as always, we are here today. Welcome to another uh, episode of Blog. Um, I'm sorry, another episode of Coffee and Conversation. We do this um, usually every week um, and discuss what's going on in the world and. Um, Right now, we are focusing on what's going on in our black in the black community. Um, lots of things happening with these protests, and um, a lot of um, uh, the resistance against systemic racism and police brutality. Uh, these 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 things are nothing new. We've been talking about this stuff a hundred years uh, <laughs> since um, black folks was free from slavery. Um, it's been the same issue that has been pervasive throughout uh, the generations through for centuries and, and throughout um, uh, our society. And, um, and so I think that uh, this is a time of change. Uh, we're not sure how much change it's going to be, but, um, and, you know, because you can expect that there will be some stonewalling and, all of that kind of stuff, but you know, we're looking for uh, some things to happen um, in the in a positive direction. So today, we're talking about the symbols and the images that sustain racism and white supremacy in society. Uh, blackface, the mammy, the butler—all of these images are just a few, just a few of the things that um are the the latest target of this black lives matter movement and this is a movement and we've been talking about it in this series in this culture war series if you have not seen the other videos go back and watch them they're hopefully informative for you provide some perspective for you um of some of the things that's going on we've been dealing with police brutality um we dealt with the the protests and we don't call them riots here um and and there's a reason for that because there is an anti-riot law there there are laws that um prohibit um insurrections and so um we have to be very careful because as, as you've heard, the president and the vice president and, and some of the um, mass media channels like Fox News um, I have been very quick to refer to uh, civil disobedience as a riot. And, 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 that's, and that's not nothing new either. Anything that uh, they want, anytime that, that uh, the dominant society wants to sustain uh, or keep going anything that rises up against what they're trying to keep in place is considered a riot and it's very strategic because they do they do that to uh bring a lawless uh view uh to the public and so um so uh now of course there are those that were there looting and burning and all of that kind of stuff. And we've talked about this stuff. Um, however, um, the, the, these um, people were not necessarily a part of the legitimate protest, the actual movement itself. Um, some of them were agent provocateurs um, in, uh, in terms of white supremacist groups that infiltrated these protests to loot and burn and 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 make the uh, uh, discredit the movement, um, and 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 make no mistake about it, these uh, provocateurs are, in some cases, uh, the agents of police departments. Yes, they are. <laughs> so. Uh, they are, and so um, so we are careful um, 
to in in terms of how those how these this uh this whole process is being portrayed and and not uh adding to or um enhancing you know the negative aspects that um are some uh sometimes promoted in the media so you guys are going to have to forgive me today i am so i am so disorganized today i tell you it is i have been miserable with this heat and i know i'm not the only one and i i do have air conditioning but i tell you this air conditioning is not working properly <laughs> or it's just not enough it's so hot i think that it you know i don't know if it's where my units out or what i have two air conditioners in my house and i i, I still i've just been it, it hasn't been good so um so and and so let me get to the topic because i, I really want to dive into this thing the phone lines are open um you can see the uh phone number at the top of the screen um you know, uh, you can dial in at any time. I want to get through some of this dialogue, though, uh, to uh, in in terms of our discussion, and uh, and and uh, before you actually start calling in, so that we can, you know, discuss, so that we can uh, share ideas and 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 things like that. So we were talking about the cancel culture. Now, if you don't know what the cancel culture is, I did a video a couple weeks ago called the purge and uh i talked about the cancel culture cancel culture is a pseudo activism tool that is used by these millennials and gen z and all of that uh the young folks uh this younger generation i, I don't know if it's is it generation z or generation y i'm not sure um I know the millennials are kind of like in their thirties, I think. So at any rate, um, but this is a, a sort of an activate, uh, uh, activism tool or methodology, uh, so to speak, that is employed uh, by the uh, younger generation. And what it is is that it is basically, um, a, a way for them to target certain things or certain people. And it could be anybody, it could be, or anything. It could be oh, anything from a worldview to um, an individual person, a celebrity, a politician. It could be a company, um, anything like that. And what they do is they socially drag uh, the person or the company or the or the ideology, um, usually through social media, um, and 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 shed a bad light on it to effectively cancel it or shut it down. Um, and one of the examples that I gave in the purge video was Ivanka Trump. Ivanka Trump was supposed to give a commencement speech at some university. I forget who it was and what happened is is that because of who she is and who she represents and who her father is and things like that the students at this university says she does not align with our values our worldviews and things like that and so when they found out who was coming to address them for this commencement speech she got canceled now she ended up releasing her commencement speech video on Twitter, <laughs> but the student says she can't come here. So that is an example of the cancel culture. And so what you're seeing happening um, in this Black Lives Matter movement is they are canceling anything that represents racism and white supremacy. Um, and so that's why you have the targeting of different things. Now, this latest thing, as I said a minute ago, has to do with the symbols, the symbols of racism, the symbols of white supremacy. And it's very important that we say that we distinguish between the two. Racism and white supremacy are two 
uh, very important distinctions um, because racism, of course, is, is, is the biases, implicit biases and prejudices and stereotypes and things like that that are, are, are projected uh, at or uh, directed towards certain ethnic groups. White supremacy, on the other hand, has to do with systems and symbols and uh, uh, views, values, um, and things like that, that maintain the superiority of white people, right? So it's, these are two different things. They are two different things. They work in conjunction with each other but they are two separate different things so we need to understand the difference and we need to understand the importance of symbolism symbolism you know because there's a big debate about whether or not we should even bother with taking the statue or or uh uh taking the statues down and uh going after uh the companies that uh, produce the uh, Aunt Jemima products or Uncle Ben's products, and they're all going to change their branding. Uh, but um, here's here's so let's talk about the importance of symbolism because we have to. There's a couple things we have to do when we deal with this issue. One is is that we have to deal with the historical context of these symbols, right? And we have to deal with how they operate to sustain and exert this white supremacy and exert its influence over the over future generations and and, and society. So and, and then we have to follow the money too. <laughs> we have to follow the money too, and we'll talk about that. So okay, so when we talk about whether or not this is even a worthy effort of going after the the confederate flags the confederate statues and monuments and all of these types of things we have to look at the historical context of what these symbols represent and symbols are important because symbols are a way of one, creating community. Two, is to exert influence over the future. So when someone creates a monument, they are saying, when I'm gone and no longer around, my image becomes uh, 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 an influence or uh, something of value in society. And it could go on forever, generation to generation to generation. It, so you're essentially still marching by the beat of that drum, even though that person has been gone a hundred years, their influence is still held over certain views and certain uh, uh, values in society. So, Symbolism, the, we have to understand the power of symbolism and why this, again, as I said a couple of, uh, uh, and I, as I've been saying all along throughout this series is, this is an absolute righteous cause. No, we cannot get, um, I, was, I was talking to someone this morning and um, um, she said, well, we can't get all of them down. No, it, it's impossible. If these flags and stuff, all those Southern flags, they're all offshoots of the Confederate flag. The American flag itself adopted the colors and the symbols of the Confederacy. So it's not the opposite way around. I think a lot of people think that the Confederate flag was designed, at, you know, after the American flag. No, it's 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 in the reverse. So, um, so we have to understand this and we have to look at the importance of these symbols. Now, you saw the other day with President Trump, he was at Mount Rushmore hosting fireworks, right? So 
And then you saw, well, if you watch, you know, any type of world news, CNN or any of those uh, 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 stations, you saw Indian tribes out protesting and blocking traffic for people, the tra the people that were trying to get into the Mount Rushmore site for these this fireworks ceremony. And, and I tell you, uh, you know, Trump, I, I don't know, you know, it's, it's so disrespectful. And, and, and the thing about it is, is that because the majority of people don't know the history behind things, that they kind of get away with this stuff. But the fact, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. So, okay, so Mount Rushmore, let's let's talk about the, the, the history of Mount Rushmore. And I, I was listening to some things last night and I found out something, some other stuff that I did I did I didn't even know. But that land, the reason why those Indians were protesting, see that land was is for them is is sacred ground. That land was given back to them because it was theirs in the first place and it was stolen and then it was given back to the the um the Lakota tribe, I, I believe. I think it was the Lakota tribe. And what happened is, is that, well, they gave it back to them until they found gold up in them Black Hills. And then they took it, you know, then they took it back again. But the thing about it is, is that this is sacred ground for that, for those people. And so... But so the fact that they were doing firework, it was like denigrating their 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 a, a sacred sacred ground for them. But besides that, let's look at the history of Mount Rushmore itself because Mount Rushmore was the vision of a guy. Let me. What is his name? Gutlow. What is his name? Hold on a second. His name is Gutlow. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Borgum. Gorlum, Gutlow Borgum. He, he uh, a racist. <laughs> it was his vision, and 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 he actually conceptualized these things um, in during the Great Depression. But what happened is is that. The Ku Klux Klan, at the same time, was up in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and wanted to do a monument dedicated to Confederate generals, uh, uh, Stonewall Jackson and some other folks. And, and so they, they wanted to do this monument. This Gudlow Borgham guy is a sculptor. And he had an idea about doing a sculpture dedicated to um, to um, imperialism and, 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 and the, the the forefathers of and and so, but it was literally a tribute to imperialism. And 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 when we look at the term imperialism, this gives us the idea of of colonization and, and world domination, those types of things. So it was to be a celebratory piece of, of those men, George Washington and everybody else that's up on that, uh, that's carved into the side of that uh, mountain. He wanted to do a dedication piece to honor the men who essentially stole America. Right. So and, you know, so, OK, so they the the Ku Klux Klan was up in Stone Mountain with an idea of doing a monument dedicated to Confederate soldiers. So some kind of way this Gutlow guy hooks up with the uh, he's contacted by the United Daughters of the Confederacy. They were raising money. The Ku Klux Klan was also raising money. And people were also, in just in society, were giving their resources. Because remember now, the country is going through a depression. And so this 
monument was supposed to give these people give give people hope and you know uh, a reminder of of the things that this country had accomplished and all that kind of stuff so people were donating money and resources to have this monument built mind you half of them couldn't even feed themselves but they were so dedicated to this history that they were given of the, their own money and their own resources to help get the project done. So Gunlow and these United Daughters of the Confederacy hook up and so the uh, the Daughters of the Confederacy brings them to the Ku Klux Klan and he starts the Stone Mountain Georgia project with the uh, soldiers and the generals and stuff. So he gets fired around, I think it was around 1925. He gets fired and they bring in another guy to work on the Stone Mountain Project. And then it was ultimately finished by um, uh, another guy. Let me give you their names. Let me give you their names. Let me give you their names. So Henry Augustus Luckman was the second guy who was a racist Jew, go figure. He wiped out all the Gutlow's work when they fired him and started all over on a smaller scale with these generals and all of that kind of stuff. But the work didn't get finished uh, or it was finished by Walter Kirkman Hancock and it was finished. Now, this is the Stone Mountain Project. It was finished in 1970. It was dedicated on May the 9th, 1970 as the Confederate Mount, um, uh, Monument at Stone Mountain, Georgia. And, and shortly after, um, a Confederate commemorative, commemorative stamp was issued by the United States Post Office as well. However, when Gutlow left the Stone Mountain Project, he went on over to uh, the uh, Mount Rushmore Project because he had been contacted um, by, um, he had been contacted to do the, uh, the presidents on the side of Mount R Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. So he left Stone Mountain, went to South Dakota to work on Mount Rushmore. And, um, and so that's what you see today. So this whole, this whole thing with the monuments and, and there are, there are similar stories uh, like this in terms of, uh, these uh, different statues and Confederate uh, uh, um, uh, monuments that are all over the country. They're all over the country, but they are grounded in uh, white superiority. That's, that's what they're there for. They are there to signify the superiority of the white race. That is what they, they're all grounded in this same ideology because technically these Confederates were traitors, really, in reality. But, but it, you know, and then, you know, you have people talking about, well, you know, uh, Trump was saying something uh, uh, the other week, uh, the other day about these are beautiful works of art. And I mean, yeah, they're, they're works of art, but it's, it's a little bit more to it than that, you know. These statues have meaning and they are there to exert influence over the thoughts and uh, of the values and uh, uh, um, of society. So it's not just works of art. I mean, you know, it, it, it's just more to it than that. So when you when you see things like this and you see the black lives matter movement say and i and i tell you i i give them credit there are some problems with the movement in terms of you know folks are are saying you know this the movement is being hijacked by women white women and the lgbtq community um and you know we'll talk about some of that stuff but in terms of the 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 um the basic uh, goal of this movement is 
absolutely righteous. It's absolutely righteous because these symbols, you can't get them all. You, I mean, it's, it's, it's so much paintings and uh, you got all kinds of things, um, other works of art that uh, contribute to this ideology. So you, it's impossible to, to eliminate all of these symbols from society because this has been going on for so long. It's so deeply ingrained that is you know you know it's almost like you got to tear your own leg off to get you know something off of you 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 know you it, you, you, you know you almost they're they're, in, they're um irrevocably intertwined now you know that stuff is so intertwined in our society that it's impossible to weed it all out but it's the it, the point is and i and and this is just my thought process i think the importance of going after even some of these symbols is to let everybody know that these symbols are not okay. Because we, you know, we just go, you know, the generations, we just go on and on. We don't even think about what we're looking at. I didn't even realize until a couple of weeks ago that there was a statue of Christopher Columbus in downtown Detroit. I had no idea. I've been here all my life, 50 some odd years. So I had no, I, 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 I don't know what I was thinking about. And so when they had protesters down there trying to take, you know, they were, I don't know, I don't know if they was really trying to take it down or if they were just, you know, acting like they were going to uh, attack this mind. And I think they tried to vandal they vandalized it or something a little bit. But Mayor Dugan ended up taking the statue down and putting it in a museum and saying, okay, well, we'll have some type of community uh, meeting to decide what we want to do with the statue. And it's like, you know, but and, and see, this is part of where this stuff gets prob problematic because Christopher Columbus didn't discover a doggone thing. It's a lie. They made it up. It's just not true. It, it, it's not. It, listen, <laughs> what do we need a statue of this dude who, you know, he just got credit for something, you know, just because, for whatever reason. There's no reason to honor him whatsoever. But this is what these statues and stuff do. See, over time, it becomes it is no longer a part of history, it becomes revisionist history. The whole narrative changes. Where something that is rep is 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 really comes out of something negative become um, becomes good all of a sudden. They become the forefathers and the ancestors and we use all these terms but they were actually just crooks and robbers and thieves and you name it murderers so this is where all of this stuff kind of gets problematic and, and like i said you know i totally agree with what these young people are doing I don't necessarily agree with how they're going about everything that they're doing, but listen, we as a different generation, myself, I'm a little older, and then you got the generation that came up, uh, actually came through the civil rights movement. We need to really make an effort to understand these young people. We need to bridge this generational gap and understand what they're doing so that we can get behind them and support it. I said this in that in the previous video. We need to support this. I don't care if they stop marching tomorrow or next year. We need to be vigilant and making sure that we ultimately see the structural changes because taking down statues is not a substitute for structural change. It's, it's not. They're just symbolic of some of the of things that we need to pay attention to. Because 
there, you know, in other words, in the way I see it is, you know, it's like the, these kids are saying, you know, listen, they're running rings around us. They got these statues and, you know, and, 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 I, I, and I, I'm glad that they did that. I am really glad that they did that. All of these brands, uh, uh, Ancient Mima, uh, um, uh, uh, Uncle Ben's and all of that, Black Sambo, Black, I think, um, what was the Little Rascals? What was the guy? Uh, Buckwheat. Buckwheat was in, was a was a was a um, uh, a creation from the little black sambo uh, dial. So you know, and 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 see now, see this is different. This part is different because that part is meant to attack our looks and keep us as a permanent underclass. Because what they use these uh, symbols for, you can see with the Aunt Jemima uh, 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 symbol, you know, basically they're trying, you know, this is about all you can be. You can be the mammy, the maid, you know, that type of thing. And then those barriers were broke through and then they revamped Aunt Jemima's look. But the idea was the same. Uh, Uncle Ben's with the butler. You had Uncle Ben's and it was another brand that had the butler. Um, I can't think of it right now. Then you had King Cotton. King Cotton, who remembers King Cotton bacon? They, 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 they had the bacon. They had, uh, they had bacon. They had uh sausage they had hot dogs or something whatever the case may be Let me, okay let's talk about king cotton for a minute and then i'm gonna start taking phone calls king cotton was this, okay so king cotton this is where king cotton came from because what happened is is that when they during the civil war the the south wanted to break off from the north and what happened is is they decided they said listen we can break off from them and we'll shut down their whole economy why because they depend on our cotton let me read you this quote let me read you this quote this is a uh, senator james henry hammond of south carolina check out what he says he says listen without firing a gun without drawing a sword should they make war on us we could bring the whole world to our feet what would happen if no cotton was furnished for three years england would topple so they're even talking about england england was dependent on the, on the cotton from the south england would topple headlong and carry the whole civilized world with her save the south no you dare not to make war on cotton no power on the earth dares to make war upon it because cotton is king. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Follow the money. This is, listen, <laughs> all of this stuff is about money. All of it. All of it is about money. Let me, let's see who's calling. Are y'all calling me? Okay, good. Let me take a call. Oh, here we go. Go ahead, caller. You're live on the air. You know, the, uh, the monuments and statues. Mm -hmm. I guess they get down people's statues. Mm -hmm. Those statues are of American soldiers that fought in many American wars. American they soldiers or Confederate soldiers? No, they were American soldiers. You had American soldiers that fought in the Mexican-American War, the Spanish-American War. Are you because are you are you talking about specific statues? Or are you talking because with the statues that I'm talking about is the Confederate statues? Well, they fought in the American Civil War also. 
Mm-hmm. Some people know they vote orange. You hear blacks that vote. You hear Jews. You hear Jewish Confederates, Asian Confederates, Mexican Confederates, mm-hmm. Native mm-hmm. American Confederates. Mm-hmm. The year wars. That's what they know. They fought the wars. Okay. Uh, uh, Robert E. Lee fought the Mexican American War alongside of Robert, uh, I'm sorry, with the Grant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They fought the Civil War. The, uh, the, the, the states that seceded from the Union by way of vote is the same states that voted to join the Union. Remember, Texas voted to secede from Mexico to join the Americas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. During the, just before the, this was started, the Mexican American War. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. So those American soldiers, then what would West Point look like if it had been for some of those which trained American soldiers today? So do you think that it's important, more important to, well, so, so okay, well then, so let's look at it this way then. In your, in your opinion, you don't, you associate them more with the wars that they fought for the country more than their representation of white supremacy. Well, it's all our history. It's our joint. It's our joint history. It's our history too. Well, we should. It has to be respected. Look at Kansas City, Missouri. They voted and they removed one of the kids from the Missouri Where is this now in Kentucky? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not familiar with it. You said where is it in Kentucky? It was in Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, Kansas City. Okay. In North, in St. Louis, in St. Louis, you had an area there around Fountain Park that's become regentrified. These people say we've been taking down King statue out of uh, Fountain Park. But I think that's retaliatory because. The, no, but listen, what I'm saying is, is that you know that they tried to, uh, they arrested a young man out there in Georgia. They tr- they tried to take down the Andrew Young uh, uh, statue. Well, they should be taking down people's st- the, the statue. You had the, in Washington, D.C., in Independence Park, where Lincoln statue static, the slave paid for and designed that statue himself. You got some here, you want to take it down. Mm-hmm. In another area, they took down the monument to the 54th Regiment, which was a black regiment that fought on the left of the Union side of the Civil War. Okay. Yeah, but you know, I you think. Remember the movie Glory? Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. The movie Glory? Yeah. Well, that's what the 54th. Right. And they, and they destroyed that monument. Uh, uh, well, I, I think that it, it's, it's the, the uh, resistance towards the symbols that represent white supremacy and racism. And I think that's what they are going for. It's impossible to tear down. You can't tear down all the statues. Let me ask you a question now. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. What is white supremacy? What is it? It's a social construct. Yes. It's a social cr- construct to maintain the, uh, the dominance of the white race in society. All right, now let me let me say something to you. Mm-hmm. When you look at uh, when you look at categorical things like agriculture, when you look at things like offshore oil drilling. Equity financing, leverage buyouts, boycotts, and sanctions. More than not, the face behind that is white. Mm-hmm. Whites used to be the face behind shipbuilding. You know who is the supreme in shipbuilding now? I, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. You know who is the supreme in in uh, in merchandise and in garments in New York now? It used to be the Jews. You know who it is now? It's the Asians. Mm-hmm. So this thing.
thing about about white supremacy being about a mindset is totally ridiculous. So what about Asian supremacy? Yeah, but a- Asians are not the dominant race. Th- listen, okay, hold on, hold on. Because what because what you're saying what you what you're saying, hold on. So am am I understanding you correctly to say are you saying that white supremacy does not exist, or are you saying? Yeah, but but who said mindset? The mindset is when you're talking about white supremacy, you're talking about from an economic manufacture production standpoint. That's where it's at. No, 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 sir, no, sir. White supremacy permeates every aspect of living in society whether it's economics, whether it's, hold on, hold on, let me stop you for one second. Whether it's economics, whether it's standards of beauty, white, the white woman was, was is to this day held as the standard of beauty, where you got other ethnic groups that are struggling with uh, their looks and, and, and feeling a certain way. So, so white supremacy is not just about where they lead in certain uh, mm -hmm. let me give you an example how that's false about standard beauty beauty is going to be in the eye of a hole well we know it's false (laughs) that's not the question why is it i'm going to give you an example why is it that nigeria white people are so Who are you talking about? The the Asians? The Nigerians, you say? Okay. Well, nobody wants to come to America and assimilate with black with the black community. No, nope, nobody does because everybody knows that we're held in as a permanent underclass. Nobody comes here and wants to assimilate with us. So, I mean, but but the, but the whole but the hold on hold on a second. But the idea that white supremacy. It, 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 it's a social construct, but it was done strategically and intentionally to maintain the dominance of the white race. White people think that not, hold on, it, listen, it is a fact that white people believe that number one, they are better, they are superior to every other race that we are in, and particularly the black race, that we are inherently Dumb. The, have you ever heard of the theories of poverty? Have you ever heard of the theories of poverty? There's a cultural theory of poverty that says we are genetically and biologically incapable of, 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 of being a successful people. Now, we know that's a lie because, as you said, Egyptians used to rule the world. Those are black folks. Hold on. We know it's a lie, but but the, the point of it is, is they teach this stuff to maintain their own dominance and superiority. That's all. So when we say social construct, that's what I'm talking about. Say again. Teach what? Theories of poverty. I have a bachelor's degree in social work. And, and and listen, I have an associate's degree in liberal arts, and I learned about the cultural theories of poverty in both Wayne County Community College and Wayne State University. So I, I don't know. And what does it, what, so you were in college and you learned this on your own? No, 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 no. It was taught. It was taught. I have textbooks that teach us. Absolutely, I have two degrees. Okay, well, where do they where do they forcefully teach this in elementary schools? I don't 
think that they teach, but but you, you would have to be teaching black history too, I guess, to teach it at elementary schools. They don't deal with, I mean, you 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 gotta, hold on a second. They don't teach sociology, so, sociological concepts and principles to elementary kids. I mean, they, they don't have the 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 uh, the academic prowess yet at that age and stage to to even understand those types of concepts. Why come they don't do it? Listen, children. Listen. The same reason why they don't cheat, teach medicine to children because they don't have the, the their brains are not developed enough. Hold on. Hold on. Their brains are not developed enough to understand certain concepts. In every at every grade level, they teach at the capacity of the of that age group. So that's that's probably why. Listen. No, no, we're we're having we're having a healthy debate. Go ahead. I'm listening. I, I can hear you. My profession, my profession is I had a company. I'm retired now. Mm-hmm. I erected buildings like the one that fell down in New York during 9-11. Mm-hmm. I erected Twin Towers. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in a white supremacy. Neither do I. Because of where I've done and what I've done and what I've done. Now, when you say about Listen, I am not an educator, so I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I disagree with you on that, but I'm not going to dispute it only because, well, hold on, hold on, I may not be wrong. Email it to me. It's the Community Advocate Network. I mean, you're supposed to be ready. You're supposed to, you're supposed to have a pen ready. It's the it, it's the community advocate network at Gmail. This is this is me. This is this is me. Um, the community advocate network. I I, I do advocacy and um, all of those types of things. So you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. You know. So, but yes, it, this is me, and that is my email. You can send me the information yeah, there. Facebook page. You're on. The, are you watching from Facebook? Or are you watching from YouTube? No, I'm not watching from Instagram. I call Blog Talk. Oh, you're on Blog Talk. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, send, go ahead and send it to me because I'm not, I, but I also know the reason why I said I disagree with you, but I, I am not an educator. I'm a social worker, so I don't know what how they develop those curriculums, but here's what I do know. Uh-huh, yep. I am live right now. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I, I appreciate you calling in. This is my first time actually getting a call from Blog Talk, so this is great. But but listen and, and tune in every Sunday because we have these type of discussions because it's very important and we won't agree on everything, but we still need to talk about these things and share our perspectives because we that is how we learn from each other okay all right i appreciate it thank you for calling in bye -bye. okay bye bye that was great i that that now that was the first that was the first time i've ever gotten a call from blog talk let me uh let me take this next caller yeah 
happen. Okay. All right. Okay. Hello. 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 You're live on the air. Greetings. My name is Elena. I'm calling from Georgia. Hi, Elena from Georgia. Yes. I was just listening in to the caller, and I, I hear so much denial. Um, yeah. Dialogue, and I'm very disappointed. Um, reality shows us, yes, we have a few Negroes that make it, but they don't speak for all of us. No. Um, there's some of the ones that fell through the cracks, so to say. That's right. Uh, we have documentation that we live in the most industrialized country in the world, but yet we occupy the wrong and, and, and has the uh, uh, quality of life as a, a person in a third world country. Yes. We're being colonized. Yes. Uh, our rights to Still. 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 Yes. And uh, 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 we are under duress here. Our, our people, bodies, black bodies are dropping in droves. Yes. So when I hear Negroes like come on mm -hmm. and try to sugarcoat our reality, yeah. I have a problem with that. Yes, ma'am. A serious problem. Yes, ma'am. You are a social worker. Yes, ma'am. You see the realities and you see the numbers. Yes. Uh, I was in Detroit uh, with a brother named Brother Ramzu Yunus a couple of months ago, uh, earlier last year. Earlier, yeah, last year, 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to Detroit. And that brother is up there now trying to get uh, issues, human rights violations. Mm. Uh, where our people are home, experiencing permanent extreme homelessness, and these sisters I got to witness first. Wow. They were poor, and they were living in cars with their children. My God. I talked to people who lost their home because certain counties decided to jack the tax revenue up. Yeah. I witnessed mental, mentally ill people living on the street. Eating out of the trash can. Mm -hmm. But you have mm -hmm. Negro mm -hmm. and have a nerve to come in and tell you how great life has been for them. What yeah. who rocks to you? Yeah. So yeah. Let me tell you what the reality number speaks to me say. Yes, ma'am. That we are colonized, that it's time to exercise self determination. We are poor not because we're stupid, we're poor because these people took our things. That's right. After slavery, after slavery, we were given land. Mm -hmm. After slavery, we set up town, mm -hmm. and they came in and dropped it down. Home. down. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You got your Rosewood. Yep. You got several Rosewoods in Georgia. There was a lot of black, co prosperous communities throughout the country, and they got rid of all of them. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So that contributes to the poverty. Yeah. And yet. They teach our children and through the curricula that their children are superior and they are inferior because they start their identity out with enslavement, Jesus. with slavery. Yes, yes, our yes. children, they can't say when that is not true. No. You had a black American that was right here. That's right. Before that European guy. That's right. Then the land, mm -hmm. they were enslaved. Mm -hmm. They were prisoners of war. That's right. So when you are
Negro. Negro. And you got Negro that sit here and try to tell you what reality is. My God. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a new day. It's a new day. And the bottom line is, a, a, a line has been drawn in the, in the sand. Yes. We're no longer, I'm part of a movement, the self-determination movement. We're utilizing international and human rights law to secure a future for our base. Send me your information, sister. Send me your information, please. You have my number as soon as you're off your call. Yes. I want you to contact me. Yes. I'm about to file papers, documentation for precautionary measures and also reparations. My God, yes. To be a part of what we're doing, all you have to do is sign a declaration and declare your right. Your human right. Awesome, awesome, you got awesome. Local right, you got state right, you got federal rights. Right. They sidestep our human rights, and you got human rights. That's Your right. Human rights this will supersede, supersede all of it. Yeah. And after slavery, that was misstep. Our ancestors made it perfectly clear they wanted their own land. That's right. But what did they do? There was a compromise made during re Reconstruction mm -hmm. when the federal government poured out the help. Mm -hmm. And pour out their support. Mm -hmm. And then unleash the Klan and the other white supremacists on us. We had senators <laughs> all up in there from Carolina and Louisiana. We had different politicians. They would commit rapes on our people. You talking. Us. And that's why the shape we're in. That's you right. You hear me. That's you right. Don't right. Don't like that to come on your show and tell you what reality is. Yeah. Because he's lying. He's a liar. Mm. And he knows he's lying. Mm -hmm. That's a direct attack on our reality. If he's happy with his political situation, mm -hmm. good luck. But the rest of us getting ready to get up off this goddamn plantation. We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, we're out of here. We are here. Yes, it's God. <laughs> I love it. I thank you so much. I are you where what are you listening to us uh through? Are you on blog talk or are you on I'm on blog talk. I'm on blog talk radio. I'm on blog talk right now. Fantastic. Yes, but I am a member, yes, am a member of Afro Descendant uh, Institute of Human Rights. I'm yes. a rights defender and a chief facilitator of Afro Descendant Confederated Nation USA. Wonderful. And right now also, Brother Ramsey Eunice, he's in Detroit. He's working fiercely, uh, registering people, getting people signed up so they can declare their... I need to find out who that is. I'm here in Detroit. That's where I'm at. Okay. Yes, I would definitely get you connected with this brother. He needs the assistance. We, we're trying to get the word out as fast as we possibly can to get Wonderful. people registered. Because by August, by August, we will be filing proper documentation to do what it is that we need to do. But Wonderful. We have to give due and give uh, our people the opportunity to join us. Yes. I like that just cut off the phone. I don't have any tolerance for that. <laughs> Try to let you know what I try to let everybody call in and share their perspective. You know, but you know what I I, I was listening to uh, somebody last night and they were saying we got to do a show on on the history of the sellout. <laughs> you know, we got. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Who are you employing now? How many houses have you built? And have you rented out to black people? What have you done now? Look for you who run for you. If you like your current political forced relationship or forced assimilation, because that's the policy that we're under right now. Right. That made us big. That made us dependent. And that's what happened to us. Well, that's the, that's the, listen, listen, that's the whole system of capitalism anyway. 
you got listen when, when people talk about you know and we all want to eradicate poverty you know, you're not gonna give as long as you have capitalism poverty has to exist it's a it's a rig it's a con the the whole system is set up for winners and losers you can you can you can't have winners without losers but it's even deeper than that because let me tell you something we matriculate one point two trillion dollars as consumers, but we don't control it. That's our right. Government is, we don't control our politics. We don't our own nothing. We don't, our we don't own no we means of production. Why? Yeah. Why? Because we're colonized. Right. All those things were taken from us. Right. All those things were taken from us, and we've been pulled in and encapsulated into a politicity that uh, that relegates us to. It's poverty. permanent, yeah, well, yeah, permanent yeah. second class citizenship, how yeah. We, how, how do we start that? Whether they vote to the right, to the left, whether you vote Democrat or Republican. Either way. Democrat self determination. You don't wait on nobody to feed you. That's you right. You have the means to feed yourself. And Absolutely. And that's what has supposed to be happening. When when, when, during the 1960s, when, Ma, when Malcolm, and, Malcolm X and Martin, Martin Luther King were well, uh, out there doing their thing or whatever. The route to go, we were manipulated politically and legally. Mm-hmm. America tried to point us in the direction to go. When Africa was liberating itself, the United States, we were supposed to be liberated right here. The United States signed on to a document with the UN stating they would put non self government people on a non self government list that would have pulled us out of the jurisdiction of the United States. And yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Political protest. That's that right. years As a matter of fact the countries that we were stolen from i don't even think those countries that those parts of africa even exist there anymore are, there, are, there are countries that have set aside land for us oh okay saying, we have people who want to go back we're working on that so they can re they can repatriate okay in africa if they choose to go and repatriate in here in the united states because we have homelands and here. Okay. Here that needs to be developed. I, 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 that needs to be yeah, I, I really want to see. And this is and this is called the movement of self determination. Yes. Say that name again. Well let me give you let me give you our our uh the, the name of our website. Go to https mm-hmm. colon slash slash mm-hmm www.adconfederation.com A D as in David Confederation.com no, AD.com Say it say it again AD.com A A as in Apple B as in David Confederation.com Yes. Okay. Okay. That's what I wanted to. I wanted to repeat it for because I'm I'm live on Facebook and I'm live on YouTube as well. Um, so um, I wanted to repeat it. It you go to w, They don't have to do the HTTPS. They can just do www a as an apple d as in David confederation dot com. And I'll I'll put that on my screen right now so that my viewers can see that. Yes, yes. Uh huh. And, and we have what we have done is we have used internationally human rights law 
to secure our human rights here and to address human rights violations uh, in the United States. Uh, okay. Our uh, chief facilitator, Dr. Mustafa, and, and, and our um, and our uh, he is the chief facilitator of our nation, and he's the dean of the Afro Descendant Institute of Human Rights. Okay. And for over five years, we have been on the on the road doing what we need to do. We've uh, conducted the research. We've traveled abroad. We're submitting. We're submitting documents. You will be able to see on the uh, on the website where we're bringing our people into nationhood so we can create a brighter day for the future of our children Absolutely. and our grandchildren. Absolutely. So we have to grow up in this reality, in this yes. uncomfortable relationship of encapsulation, where you can drop a black body on the spot and there's and, no And justice. step over it, yes. And step yeah. over it. Yeah. And lay out there in the sun, and in the sun four hours. That's Who right. Who does that? That's Who allows right. allows people to continue? to live up under some such condition. Those Negroes who want to distance themselves, I suggest they stay over on their side of the fence. Stay on their side of the fence. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You're talking right. You're talking right, sis. And I'm going to go. I'm going to take some other callers. But listen, uh, do you have a pen? Do you have a pen? I want you to email me. I want you to email me, and that's www.adconfederation.com. Make sure you guys write that down. And 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 she is on Facebook as well. So make sure that you uh, you guys uh, uh, check her out and uh, see what's going on with this. There's a there's a lot of things. People are coming together, and people are trying to make some things happen make sure that we get the change the structural changes that we need that you know so we won't be talking about this for the next hundred years you know this stuff is not new we've been talking about the same stuff okay you ready sis okay it's uh it's the community advocate network okay at gmail.com Email me. I want to know who your Detroit connections are because I'm right here in Detroit, and uh, so I can find out okay. how I can okay. assist them, and, and especially with that voting. Okay. All right then. All right. Thank you so much for calling in. All right. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So, um, yeah. Listen. Um, you know, we've got folks out here putting in the work, guys. They're putting in the work. And they're trying to make some things happen uh, for the black community so that we don't have to keep going through this. Mothers are tired of burying their sons. Children are tired of burying their fathers. And 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 really, the women are not safe at this point. You know, I mean, it's just been an all out war declared on black people. Anytime that, like she said, you know, you can kill black folks and, you know, step over them drinking a hot Pepsi, no justice, no charges, no, you know, I mean, it's crazy. We got to get changes. We have to. We have to. And everybody has their part to play. I know I, I you know, I, and I said this before, I can't get out in them streets marching and all of that stuff. But there's in it all kinds of ways that each of us can play our part in supporting this movement. We have to get together. We can't just sit back and talk about what we should and shouldn't be doing. We can't sit back and complain about how things are being done. These young folks have taken it to the streets. They are not waiting on us anymore. They have totally lost confidence in the older generations. And they are, and you know they have, they're, they're risking COVID-19 out there protesting. So, you know, we need to support this. And, and we don't have to agree on everything. We can sort it out, sort it out later. But let's get the work done. Let's get the work done. Because, you know, folks, a lot of times people don't care about stuff until it hit their doorstep, until it's their son, you know, don't don't do that. Don't do that. Let's get together now and 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 affect real change in 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 and not just in our community, in society. Because there are things 
you know, when she talks about state rights, local rights, federal rights, we need to know these things and we need to know what is available to us so that we can access, you know, and improve our lives, the quality of our lives. That's that's what it's all about. You know, white people just want to be in charge. <laughs> they want to be able to walk up to you in stores and stuff and ask you questions and demand that you answer them. You know, uh, this stuff is crazy. This stuff is crazy. But it, it doesn't, I, what I want us to understand is that this stuff doesn't come out of nowhere. These are old laws, Supreme Court rulings. We talked about some of this stuff. Um, and I highly recommend that you guys, if you all didn't see my video, The Purge, it's not the best quality. I still had that old camera, but it's, 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 it's good enough for government work. You can get the message out of it. Um, we talk about some of these things, you know, these things that have been passed down through the generations. And even with certain things, you know, we were talking about the Dred Scott case, Dred Scott versus Sanford, where the freed man went down to Mississippi to do some work for his boss. He was already free. He went down there and got sold off into slavery again. He said, wait a minute. They, and the case went to Supreme Court. Supreme Court said, Black a black man has no rights that uh, that a white man that any white man is bound to respect. Very famous case. Go look it up. Dred Scott versus Sanford, eighteen fifty six or eighteen fifty seven, somewhere up in there. And what happened is, and 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 the thing about it is, is that how the Supreme Court uh, ruling is written, it says. That that the black it says the black man has no rights that any white man is bound to respect if he deems it economically feasible for him for him. So in other words, if if a white man decided that he needed you for the his 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 personal uh, <laughs> income growth, you know his personal economic standing, they could sell you back off into slavery. Now that, that stuff was eradicated supposedly with the 13th and 14th Amendment when they made up the anti-slavery laws. But the whole point of it is, is that those types of things are still in the mindset and in white culture. I, I, and like I said, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. When you see, I see videos all the time and they call them Karens. People coming up to people in stores, party stores, asking them questions and all that kind of stuff and thinking they're supposed to, because they think that they have a, an ability over us to, because from that Supreme Court, things like that Supreme Court ruling, that's not the only thing, but that's one of the things that they can essentially override and demote our rights at any given time by any white person. That kind of stuff is still ingrained in white society, white culture. <coughs> so this, these are this is what is happening, and and we need to we need to we need to uh, we need to be aware, and um, and we need to get to work. We need to figure out what it is that we can do. If it's nothing more than voting, let me, as a matter of fact, let me, uh, uh, you guys need, we, I, I still want to go ahead and uh, talk about this um, absentee voting. Um, you guys, I want to encourage you to uh, sign up for that. I was trying to put it on screen. I was trying to put it on screen. Let me see. Um, I think this is it. Um, so I want to encourage everybody to uh, go ahead and uh, sign up for it. Well, I guess that's about as big as it's going to get. Uh, make sure that you signed up for the absentee voting. I was reading an article last night. They were saying that absentee voting requests have gone up 350 percent here in michigan which is wonderful you can dial 313 i believe the number is 876 vote 313 876 vote 
that is the number that you call to order your absentee voting package and, and call and get it now because we got primaries in August and we got the general election uh, in November. And so uh, we need to make sure that we have this stuff um, uh, ready. Also, also, um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Blackout Tuesday is coming up July the 7th. Uh, this is uh, what was called, let me bring that up. Let me bring that up. Hold on a second. I'm on a new platform today, guys. So that's the other thing. I didn't get any freezing either. <laughs> so that other platform was doing too much freezing. So Blackout Tuesday, Blackout Tuesday is this Tuesday, July the 7th. Um, this is what has been uh, 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 called on by uh, the rapper T.I. and what's the guy, Killer Mike. Um, with uh, Blackout Tuesday, no black dollars in the economy. Go grocery shopping, go and whatever you're gonna do between now and Monday. Um, uh, you heard the, the sister that called in from Georgia, $1.2 trillion that, uh, of black, the black dollars that, uh, that flow through the economy, uh, annually and, and, and it stays in the black community. It, it, it bounces one time they, they were talking about how in the Asian community, their dollars bounce eight times before it leaves their community, the white dollar bounces three or four times or whatever it is. I'm just throwing out some numbers. I can't remember the exact exact stats, but they were talking about that. And 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 one guy said the uh Dr. Claude Adams said he said the black community goes bankrupt every night at seven o'clock. You know, when all of the stores and the retailers and stuff close down, that's it, because we don't own anything. And, and 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 there's a reason for that, but yeah. So Blackout Tuesday, July the seventh, that's coming up. We want to make sure that we do that, and, and we do. And it's a boycott. It's a boycott. Um, what is this? Um, it's a it's a boycott. Um, and you know we we're doing it because we want to. We need to start practicing group economics besides what impact it'll have on the economy and all of that. We're trying to develop a, a, a system of practicing group economics. This is why the Asians are so successful and the Nigerians that the gentleman was talking about and all of these types of things is because every other ethnic group <clears throat> Uh, generally, uh, the Hispanics, all of them, practice group, group economics. Hispanics are, are the, the largest minority group in America now anyway. They have surpassed us in every, they have more electoral vo votes, and they supersede Blacks in uh, annual household income. Did you know that? Hispanics make more money than Black people do now. We are literally the bottom class. You know, uh, they have more voting power than the black community does. This is very important. Trump just appointed, he's appointed federal judges. I think it's somewhere like 160 federal judges have been appointed by Donald Trump. They'll serve the lifetimes. This is how white supremacy is sustained. See, they, they, they put not just the systems in place, but the people in place to maintain those systems. So we want, you know, proper sentencing and all of that kind of stuff. Our best hope at this point are these local elections. That's uh, the like the primaries we're talking about that's coming up here in Michigan in August. And, and we're very blessed when we talk about the absentee voting. You know, uh, out in Kentucky, Mitch McConnell shut down just, I think he left one voting place open for in Louisville for 600,000 people to vote at. 
voter suppression at its highest level. So we're we're very blessed, those of us that are here in Michigan, to have a governor really, and you know that you know wants to make sure that we have the provision so that our voices are heard. I mean, the stuff that is going on. I mean, literally, voting is under attack. They understand that they don't want everybody to vote. That's the whole thing. They they don't want that. And so you know, so uh, you know, we got to get with it. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to see what else, if there was anything else that I needed to tell you guys about. Oh, we just celebrated the the anniversary of the uh, Civil Rights Act of 1964 on July the 2nd. And there's a few Civil Rights Acts. I, I um, Let me see. This one, the anniversary was on July the 2nd. Okay, yeah. So that was the Civil Rights Act of 1964. We also had, so we have four, Civil Rights Act of 1866, Civil Rights Act of 1968. Uh, well, we had 1875, 18, uh, 1875, 1964, 1965, and 1968. Yeah. So those are the three Civil Rights Act. And they're all different. I think the, the 1965 one was basically uh, dealing with discrimination in housing. That is also the one that deals with the anti-riot act that makes it uh, unlawful, illegal to start uh, uh, riots and protests and stuff like that. So we need to we need to know these types of things and uh, and distinguish between them. A lot of times. They'll, people will say the Civil Rights Act and we, we just kind of lump it all into one. A lot of people think it's only one Civil Rights Act, but it's not as four. It's four. Um, just like the Constitution. Some people say, you know, we have the Constitution of the United States. There are some black scholars who suggest that there are two constitutions because the initial Constitution did not include black people. So in their estimation, the second constitution was with the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. So the, all of these types of things so uh, that are nuances and, and contribute to the whole of things that we experience in our everyday lives, in our quality of lives. If you think it doesn't affect you, you're sadly mistaken. You know, like, you know, people talk about this, the statues and the monuments and stuff. Well, that was a long time ago. Listen, that head of George Washington that's on Mount Rushmore was dedicated in 1930. That wasn't that long ago. The Confederate monument, monument that I talked about that's on the side of Stone Mountain, Georgia, that was just finished in 1970. May the 9th, 1970. So, look. Stop. We, you know, okay. So, but at, at any rate, oh, I forgot to thank my guest hosts on Father's Day, Daryl Horton and Marvin Arnold. They came in, they were gracious enough to come in and talk with us. Ooh, I almost forgot it. Um, they came in and, and dealt with some things about, uh, uh, you know, just challenges of raising black sons and uh, uh, police brutality and all of the different hate crimes that are coming up. Like the sister was telling us about, there's other cases out there in Georgia. And I believe it. There, you know, there's a lot of people that are uh, young black men and and women who have been killed that we don't even hear about. We know the 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 Philando Castillo, Eric Gardner, Trayvon Martin, and all of those names. But I was looking at some numbers, and, and we again talked about it on that other video, The Purge. Um, when I came, I came, the numbers I came across that it was somewhere around 8,000 Black people that have been killed by the police between 2013 and 2019. And I think that's a low ball number. I need to verify that number, check it against some other statistics. But 
it's somewhere between eight and ten thousand black people that have been killed by the police in the past six years. That's a lot of people. That's a, I mean, it's a whole problem. It's a whole problem. We're talking about renegade cops that's out here literally killing black people. And that's systemic too. That's systemic too. We got this law and order stuff going on. You know, uh, you know, we want to, you know, we got this romance with, with law and order and all of that. Law and order is good in its place, but what, what, what we dealing with has nothing to do with law and order. The, you know, the, the, first of all, police, the police came, were, were created for slave patrols. Understand that. And they are still policing black people. That is the history and the culture of law enforcement. They they were it was created for slave patrols, and that is their culture to this day. That's why the Black Lives Matter movement is attacking them so hard. It, it, I mean, besides the fact that King and everybody else dealt with this stuff years and years and years ago. Is, is still going on, but it's, it's legitimate because it hasn't stopped. In fact, it's worse. They've started these hangings again. Unbelievable. California is a liberal state. They had two within two weeks, a, what, just a couple weeks ago, of your two young black men that were hung, and they're calling them all suicides. I think it was five in the past month. It's been five people hung on, on in different parts of the country over the past month or so. So this is a whole problem. And so what you see with the Black Lives Matter movement is, is a strategic step by step. They 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 did the rioting and so they 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 and, and little by little they going after the police brutality. And uh, then now they're dealing with the images and symbols of racism and white white supremacy. And we'll see where, where they go from here. Because I'm telling you, somebody did their homework. I, I think these kids are doing a phenomenal job. There's problems. There's concerns about things that are going on in the movement. Yes. <clears throat> but overall, these kids are doing, a, they are doing a great job. They really are. If you really like just just investigate, just do some research on some of the stuff that they're doing and see how these things came about. And it, it's, it, it's absolutely a righteous cause. And, and we definitely need to support it. We need to support it. So is there anything else I want to say hi? Nikki, uh, is Nikita still in here? I wanted to I, I want to thank any and everybody that supported the uh, my dear sister Nikita her uh, pull up and serve um, her pull up and serve event on uh, the last week last Saturday in June. Um, Nikita or Shirley, if y'all are still here, call call please, um, and just share with us briefly about the um, just the experience if you if you can. Um, but anyway, um, I, I'll find in it. And if she's not available, I, I will definitely find out when she's going to do the next one. Um, and what she's doing is, 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 is in the downtown area, um, going down there and taking meals to, uh, the homeless people and things like that. And so, um, I'll definitely keep you guys posted on when she's going to start taking donations and when the next event will be. And um, so that we can all participate with that. Who else is in here? Constitutions for U.S. citizens, blacks, and everyone else. Open carrying of weapons is protected by the Second Amendment. Yeah. Um, and who is this? Planky. If I'm if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, please forgive me. Pianki Banco. So, well, let me see if I can put it up on the screen. So what Pianchi is saying is that the Constitution is for U.S. citizens, Blacks, and everyone else. Opium or care weapons is protected by the United States. 
uh, by the Second Amendment. I'm sorry. And and that is, uh, I understand what you're saying. What I was saying about the 13th and 14th Amendment, um, there are some Black scholars who suggest that the there is a second constitution, which was the 13th, uh, that started with the 13th Amendment, where Blacks were included. There are there's been much debate as to whether or not the founding fathers of the country had uh, other ethnic groups besides whites in mind when they drafted the initial constitution. So that's that's what I was talking about there. Um, were we not slaves during the writing of the constitution? I'm not sure if that's a question. Um, I'm not sure if that's a question or not, but thank you all for joining me. Um, uh, Robert Brown, Pianki Banco, Shirley, all of you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Yvonne, I thought I saw Yvonne in here and, and Reverend Cohill is here. And Tierra. Okay, so um, thank you as always. Thank you guys for joining me. And um, I will definitely be back next week, Lord's willing, uh, to uh, continue our conversation on this cultural war series. We will uh, we'll see you next time.